has first cut across to the UN headquarters where Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov is addressing a Security Council meeting. Gained a great deal of experience. Japan has been shamefully quiet about who bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki. As we know, uh, uh, during the G7 summit, uh, Mr. Blinken, with great quiet that all members comply with the resolutions of the Security Council, our subsequent action to prevent confrontation, including President Putin's uh, proposal dating December 2021 uh, for the agreement to be reached on multilateral mutual security guarantees, were high-handedly rejected. Nobody, we were told, can prevent NATO from embracing Ukraine. For all of the years after the coup, despite our insistence, nobody, none of Kiev's handlers brought uh, Poroshenko or Zelensky or the Ukrainian ver uh, apparata to their, their senses. Nobody brought them to their senses. In the uh, upper Ukrainian rada, uh, uh, through legislation, the Russian language, Russian education, Russian media outlets, and Russian culture religious traditions were destroyed in a direct violation of the Ukrainian Constitution and the Universal Convention on the Rights of National Minorities. In parallel, the Kiev regime, through legislation in day-to-day -day life, introduced Nazi practice and theory without any uh, concealment openly, they organized in the center of Kiev and other cities, exuberant torch-bearing marches with SS division banners upheld. The West remained silent, and this uh, was fully in line with U.S. plans to leverage their uh, open, the openly racist regime in the hope of weakening the Russian Federation in a strategic focus on eliminating uh, competitors. It is clear to all, even though not everybody talks about this, this is not at all about Ukraine. It's about how international relations will continue to be shaped through the establishment of a sound consensus on the basis of balance of interests or through aggressive and volatile advancement of Washington's hegemony. We cannot consider the Ukrainian, the Ukrainian issue separately from the geopolitical context. Multilateralism uh, provides for respect for the United Nations Charter and all of its uh, interlinkage of its principles. And this was uh, mentioned above. The Russian Federation has clearly announced the goals uh, which we are pursuing through the special military operation to eradicate the threats to our security, which were created for years by NATO representatives directly on our borders and to protect people who were, have been deprived of the rights proclaimed through multilateral conventions to protect them from the public statements of a Kiev regime and their actions and direct threats uh, to destroy and expel them from territories where their uh, predecessors lived for uh, centuries. Uh, uh, what were the U.S. doing? In, NATO and NATO doing in Yugoslavia, in Iraq, in Libya? Were there threats there to their security, their culture, their religions, their languages? What were the multilateral norms that they guided them in their proclamations of the independence of Kosovo and the violation of the principles of the OSCE through the destruction of the stable economic uh, state, economically stable states of uh, Iraq and Libya, which collapsed as a result of their actions uh, and uh, the, uh, there was places were located at thousands of miles from U.S. shores. Their, uh, the multilateral system was an blatant attempt of, uh, US, of the U.S. And there is a clear imbalance in the U.N. Secretariat and the U.N. as a whole. And this is now seen in the uh, staff who are now taking liberties with politically motivated conduct that is not befitting of international civil servants. We urge the Secretary General to ensure that all of its uh, the, of all of his staff comply with impartiality in line with Article 100 of the UN Charter. We also urge the Secretariat leadership in drafting documents on the common agenda, which was mentioned here, the new agenda for peace, which is mentioned here, to be guided by the need to suggest to member states ways to find a balance of interests rather than helping to advance neoliberal concepts. Otherwise, instead of multilateral of a multilateral agenda, there will be a deepening of a division between the uh, golden billion and the 
international majority. Speaking of multilateralism, we cannot be limited to the international context as a whole. Just when we talk about a democracy, uh, the international context cannot be disregarded. Double standards need to be abandoned, and multilateralism and democracy need to be respected within states and uh, in their relations one another. Everybody knows that the West, in imposing their understanding of democracy on others, does not want to see democratization of international relations on the basis of respect for sovereign equality of states. But now, advancing their rules on the international arena, they're increasingly asphyxiating multilateralism and democracy at home, applying increasingly repressive tools for suppressing any dissent as their criminal Kiev regime has done with the support of its teachers, the U.S. and allies. Distinguished colleagues, as was the case in the Cold War, we have reached a dangerous, possibly even more Our correspondent, Susan Tehrani, is joining us on the phone line from New York City. Susan, big words coming in from Sergei Lavrov at the U.N. headquarters. Antonio Guterres sitting right next to him, who has already denounced Russia's uh, acts in Ukraine. What more can you tell us? What's happening there? Right. We're really hearing uh, Lavrov really reject what it sees as the international world order, as the West likes to describe, and really hammering down uh, not only on... Uh, the West, notably the United States, but very interestingly, he also uh, rejected what is seen as Bretton Woods institutions and tools of the U.S. in economic and even military uh, affairs and rejects this non-consensual concept, which is really a pathway uh, to de-dollarization since the Bretton Woods system really made dollar the dominant uh, currency of the time. And so he also wonders, you know, who gave the West the right, uh, the right to speak on behalf of the entire world, accuses the United States of trying to uh, destroy the ASEAN architecture. And then we heard him really cite, uh, quote unquote, arrogant NATO expansion in the areas where Russia has compelling national interests. He notes that the major threat to NATO is actually the uh, OSCE. And uh, he even went as back as talking about how the Japanese had patience in failing to mention that it was the Americans who nuclear bombed their cities. Uh, he cites manifestation of U.S. aggression. This comes, of course, in light where the international community is concerned that Russia may use nuclear weapons against Ukraine and its European uh, and Ukraine's European uh, neighbors. And then Russia makes the claim, Lavrov, that the Ukrainian government does not enjoy broad legitimacy and highlights, quote, consent of the governed language in the U.N. Charter. He's pointing to the countries of the global south, mostly that are weary of this war, uh, whether or not Ukraine does enjoy that is a point of uh, really debate. Uh, he also accuses the key government of destroying religious practices, and he re reiterates the charges of, quote-unquote, Nazi racism, yes. uh, which the government allegedly promotes. So a lot coming out from Lavrov. Uh, he also asks about the multilateral principles at stake when the U.S. and NATO got involved uh, in places like Libya and Iraq, neoliberal concepts and no charter uh, substitutes, you know, countering what Anthony Guterres was saying, how the international world order operates. Absolutely. Thank you for all those updates, Susan.